So what I will focus is for the chip application of 5G and what kind of new issues that we need to address uh, when 5G coming along for the next uh, several years. So let's look at uh, what's the key drivers in the market that, uh, uh, for the, the innovation coming from the 5G, ADAS, and AI. This is the main uh, technology innovation that coming along. And if you look at the 5G baseband design and also the AI design uh, used in the ADAS system, the AI chip is driving a lot of transistors on chip. Now, if we look at the V100 coming from uh, NVIDIA on the Pegasus uh, system, there are more than 20 billion transistors uh, that implemented in 7 nanometer and in the future for 5 nanometer design. And that we are looking at aggressive power performance area uh, from everyone that implementing the chip. So the new issue that for the 5G systems that we have to look at the system reliability perspective and that the 5G systems, including the AI system in the ADAS system, and the 5G is used in the V2X system. So the reliability requirement is uh, more than 15 years and or more, and it will be operated under the harsh environment. So a lot of uh, reliability issues I'm going to talk about today, uh, including the thermal ESD, EMI, EMS, and also the aging issues. Uh, these are the new issues uh, for the long-term operation status of the chip. And if we, we see that for the seven nanometer design, that we see a lot more failures uh, coming along, that including the layout dependent effects that you need to address because the transistor layout are so close to each other. And they are a fast Monte Carlo simulation need uh, because we need to look at the variability from the process, uh, look at the high quantile sigma calculation. And the VDD is uh, continuing to drop below 500 millivolt. So that give you a very uh, slim margin in terms of the design for reliability. And DVD impact on timing is a new problem that we see uh, several failures from our customers already that we need to uh, watch out. So all these problems also uh, going into the 3DIC design that Chris will have more details about 3DIC and what's the problems associated with uh, uh, fan out uh, wafer level packaging design or the 3DIC and we'll talk about that. So let's look at some of the requirements and challenges that we want to bring the 5G design into the marketplace. Uh, uh, the first problem is that the frequency continue to increase uh, from the uh, sub 6G design to 60, uh, 28G to 39G uh, frequency band. And with uh, antenna, multiple antennas uh, with uh, massive MIMO and the beam forming functionalities on the mobile phone or on the 3DIC, like how do we uh, reduce the noise uh, interference between the modules? Another challenge is, is uh, power integrity and reliability integrity I mentioned about. We will get into more details about it. And the substrate noise uh, interference from the digital session of the design and that impact the analog session. And that's a lot of things happen in the mixed signal design that uh, we need to uh, have a good design with the problem. And the new problems, uh, another problem for 5G design is uh, you need a very high frequency design. Uh, not only for the cloud trees transmit, transmission lines, but also for the spiral inductor uh, to complete our solution offering uh, for the 5G design uh, coming along. And that's a very important piece uh, for 5G. Let's look at, uh, there's a, a various trade-off uh, of the beam forming. Beam forming is a critical component uh, for the 5G design. And there's an analog design, there's a hybrid design of the beam forming functionality. It's also a full digital design that depends on where you want to put the beam forming functionality on a SOC or on a different uh, RF chip uh, together with the SOC on a 3DIC. So there are a lot of trade-off uh, coming from different companies uh, looking at the design strategy. And if we look at uh, some of the startup, uh, for example, from uh, Movendi and the Blue Daniel, and they are designing a massive uh, MIMO systems uh, the one common characteristic is that uh, they are consuming a lot of power, uh, more than 100 watt, uh, if you look at some of the startup. And with uh, Rodom that uh, Larry talked about, 
like electronics, the 5G are operating at high frequency, so a lot of uh, signal interference and also a lot of EM issues in addition to the thermal issues for the high power consumption uh, devices. Another application for 5G is that we put in the ADAS, uh, 5G that will serve the V2X application uh, for the ADAS system. Uh, as Larry mentioned about, uh, he has the latest data for four terabytes per, uh, per hour. This is from Intel's data, it's a 400 gigabytes uh, per day. Yeah. So you can see that after one year, that yeah, it progress uh, uh, more data. And we look at the NVIDIA systems. Uh, this is the Pegasus uh, driver uh, ADA systems, and the uh, AI and also the 5G design uh, providing the V2X. There are a lot of uh, innovations uh, required for the LiDAR systems, uh, high frequency radars, and uh, 5G chipsets for V2X applications, and not mention the end-to-end -end security requirement uh, for the ADA system. Therefore, the 5G ADAS, AI, they are all intertwined together. The AI chip is used in ADAS, and the 5G chips is used for V2X applications. And so all this uh, providing the intelligence for pedestrian detection, uh, for vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle, uh, uh, the avoidance, and a lot of applications that need all these functionalities. If we look at the sign of flow, like, uh, starting with the RTL design and, and do the implementation of a pressure route, and then all the way to the tap out, uh, like NSYS uh, semiconductor BU, we focus on the sign off area for the many for the power integrity. But if you look at the issue uh, for the, the 5G design or ADAS, not only the power integrity is important, but also multi physics. Uh, that issues that we need to resolve as well. That including the ESD thermal signal integrity, power integrity, reliability perspective, the agent, the EMI, EMS, and also mechanical issues. So for the modern chip design, uh, the chip packaging system, not only the power integrity, electron migration are important. For your chip design, we have to address all the multi-physics uh, requirement for seven nanometer design, five nanometer design, is getting more and more important. It's no longer a very simple sign off. Uh, requires a metaphysics perspective of the sign off. That's why we think that for ANSYS, not only for power integrity, electro migration, like combined with uh, EP, uh, the, the Larry's uh, the BU focus, that we can provide a comprehensive offering of the solutions. Uh, that solve all the metaphysics uh, problems. I'll give you some examples on that. That uh, we acquire uh, Helix, and, and we will integrate the solution, and we will have a lot of uh, uh, wonderful solution that can solve your 5G problems. And their focus is on the spiral inductor synthesis, uh, and with uh, excellent correlation with the HFSS, and they also solve the electromagnetic crosstalk between the signal lines and the power lines, and between the signal to signal. And they also have a very fast electromagnetic scan of your design to quickly detect uh, where is the weakness uh, spot that, uh, for the electromagnetic crosstalk. So let's look at some of the issues that uh, for the power ground design, uh, there are 5x uh, complexity increase. And for the VDD, it's uh, getting below 500 millivolt. And so the margin for the uh, noise is getting smaller and smaller. And one issue that we look at the sub 500 millivolt mini design is that if you look at the left of the uh, of the red curve, it has a long tail. Uh, if, you, if we do a spy simulation of the current drawing by the cell, it has a long tail. And if you compare to the high VDD uh, design, uh, it has a Gaussian distribution. The long tail it represents a new problem that uh, your latency, uh, the delay through the critical path may be different, may not be the same as you think. So if you look at to the right uh, of the design, that there's a drop of the signal output, and this uh, may be caused by the long tail of the, uh, the column profile uh, design that, yeah, for the cell. So this is the problems that uh, we see. 
and also there are voltage impact on timing problems uh, coming along. So we are very glad to announce that uh, with our new offering of a Red House SC, that all our seven nanometer customers have moved 100% to, uh, to the Red House SC platform. And Red House SC platform is built around the digital worker architecture. And uh, it's a new architecture that we acquired several years ago from, uh, from the gear. And, and this architecture is uh, based on the Hadoop and with our customized uh, implementation. And we also put a machine learning. Uh, tomorrow morning, I will give a talk on this uh, application uh, using the machine learning. And with this architecture, we, we ported all the products on the Cscape uh, distributed computational platform. Now we are able to make use of 200 calls, 300 calls, or even more. And they require for each node, require very little memory, uh, like uh, 64 gig, and not the one terabyte uh, with uh, some other solution. And then we can run uh, with a scalable solution. Uh, doesn't matter how big the size of your chip is. And we are able to finish the simulation uh, in a reasonable time. So this is, uh, and also it has a capability to provide uh, the visibility of a different view of the design. So this because it's a, it has a Python API, and so customers are able to write different kind of script and to query the data from the database uh, uh, very flexibly. For example, this one, uh, we look at the switching windows uh, from the prime time. And uh, combined with the DVD weakness drop uh, in the heat map, and also the timing path uh, for the critical timing path. Now we can identify uh, which instance in the critical timing path will be the most important for customers to fix the problem. And so this is the benefit of the architecture. Yeah. Therefore, uh, starting from the chip design, uh, we look at some of the, uh, the, the new platform we offer. I can solve the problem uh, using the Red SC. And there are a, a suite of problems, including the agent, EOS, ESC, EM, self heat, and also going to the multi die integration for uh, Chris, uh, we'll focus on that. And for the 5G systems, uh, there are system reliability issues that we will focus uh, for the next uh, several slides. So like Larry talked about using IcePac uh, for the chip packaging system of the 5G design. But how did you solve the thermal gradient on chip? Uh, the way we solve is uh, using the chip thermal model coming from each chip in the 3D IC configuration, for example. And we provide a 10 micron by 10 micron tile-based uh, thermal profile. And combined with uh, IcePac uh, providing the heat transfer boundary condition for the 3D IC, then we can use a finite element method to solve the thermal gradient in every location. And therefore, if you see that with the, this iteration, usually it takes about three times. And then we can uh, finalize what's the thermal gradient on not only on chip, but also on the package, uh, the hotspot. So one issue that customers tell us, uh, is, told us is that uh, for the power amplifier, for PMIC, or for the advanced thin fat uh, with a cluster of uh, switching, high switching instances, and how did you address the local hotspot on chip? So, and sometimes uh, that uh, you want to get uh, using the detailed finite element method. So this is a method that we developed. That this started from the previous slide uh, for the finite element method for the chip package system. And we can go down to each interconnect and develop a 3D sub-model, which is a machine model coming from the previous uh, CPS uh, machine, thermal machine. We send this machine model to ANSYS Mechanical as a MAPDR sub, uh, uh, the sub-model fires. And in that method, now we can solve a, a finite area of the thermal hotspot in the advanced thin fat designs. And also, we can solve the mechanical issues uh, for the design, uh, especially for this example, is a wafer level packaging design. Uh, for the extreme low K layer, uh, it has uh, stress weakness. 
And by using this, this method, that you can see uh, more details from the paper that we just published uh, last year. And then uh, for this new floor, and for a certain customer that they look at the advanced fin fact, and for the local hotspot, for example, for CERTIS, now, this method will enable the detection of the hotspot with the finite element method. And so it would be a pretty realistic temperature that you need to address with. Another problem is uh, aging. The aging, uh, why it becomes important? Because the devices, the system need to survive by 15 years. And the, for the popular aging problems caused by NBTI, negative bias, uh, temperature instability, and the hot carrier injection, it will affect the trapping of the, uh, the carriers in the gate, under the gate area, and that will shift the VT, and the VT will be higher. And so your, the latency of the path will be slower. And so that will affect your performance of the design. The aging issue definitely is uh, one issue that we need to uh, worry about. And we also need to look at every critical path and run very efficiently. Another issue is uh, substrate noise uh, interaction. Uh, for the 5G designs, uh, you have, if you look at the layer radios and the sensor actuator along with the digital processors. And with a high switching noise coming from the processor, they can propagate through the substrate and will affect the analog circuitry. And so for the very um, sensitive, uh, the 5G beamforming module and the IFI, the radio frequency interference, that will shift the carrier frequency. And that will be an important problem to worry about. So the other area is uh, system level ESD for 5G. And we have a whole suite of uh, ESD solutions that we developed, started uh, more than 10 years ago. And not only look at the on-chip ESD functionality, sign off, but also for the new problem for 5G systems is a system level ESD. Uh, let's look at one of the problem. Uh, and we are building a chip ESD compact model from the chip solution and provide that to the system provider. So here is an example uh, for the PC board and with the connectors and also with using the SI way. With the model coming from the Red Hawk uh, with the chip ESD compact model and also the Pathfinder, that this model uh, with a different uh, C die, for example, that we will determine what's the actual residual voltage and current in the package pin. And this is very important to determine that if your ESD protection is uh, sufficient enough. And so we have a whole solution, not including the extraction layout, pathfinder, the clamp monitoring, combined with the SI way and the connector monitoring using HFSS for the system level ESD monitoring. And so some of our customers design the 5G design and they, have, uh, they see the system ESD failure problem. Uh, the last issue I want to address for the system reliability is the EMI and the EMS. The EMI is the emission problem uh, to the environment, and the EMS is uh, what's the immunity problem uh, for the noise coming from the outside, and how does it affect the internal electronics. So there's a standard called IEC 62132. What, what it means is that it, uh, it provides a direct power injection model and this direct in, uh, power injection model will provide a one watt energy through the uh, hundreds of megahertz all the way to one gigahertz. Uh, some, of the, some of the people are doing the DPI testing all the way to the 18 gigahertz because of the 5G design. And what, we, what do we need to do uh, for the EMS monitoring? We need to do the extraction and monitoring for not only for the chip, but also for the package and the board. And we need to combine with a SPI simulation with a CECM, which is a chip ESD compact model. By considering the ESD model on chip, we can get a very good uh, correlation with the measurement uh, from the paper we published uh, last October. So uh, 
I cannot leave without talking about machine learning a little bit, <laughs> because tomorrow morning I'm going to give a talk on machine learning. And uh, the reason why we use machine learning and is that uh, a lot of applications are on the customer side. They have a plenty amount of uh, data generated uh, from the simulation and from also with a couple with other tools. So how do we use this data? And we have a perfect platform on the Seascape uh, with a distributed worker architecture. Uh, we put a machine learning layer on top of it so we can access uh, TensorFlow, scikit-learn, and uh, also customize the machine learning module. Uh, so we can solve uh, by looking at the data generated from the simulation tools. Uh, we can perform big data analytics uh, with the machine learning. And that's why we have been working on different kind of applications. Uh, we have one application with uh, NVIDIA on uh, EM Assistant and to look at what's the, how did you wave or, or decide that like, you need to fix the problem coming from the electron migration uh, check of totem. The other application tomorrow morning I will talk about is a timing assistant. How do we detect the critical timing path and from the amount of data coming in uh, generation of different scenarios, which is the switching scenarios uh, using the Red Hat SC, and uh, how do we determine the scenario predictor, and also the critical path predictor, and to determine that which critical path we need to look at more carefully with a path FX. So uh, tomorrow morning, please welcome to uh, the talk. Tomorrow afternoon, I'm also will be on the machine learning panel, and we'll talk about different applications that ANSYS have been working on. So in conclusion, that uh, 5G is an exciting area that we can work with, especially for ANSYS, because we focus on multi-physics simulation. And with the uh, acquisition of Helix, that complete our story, uh, not only for the chip that we can solve the power integrity, uh, EM, also different kind of multi-physics simulation, also including the high-frequency simulation that we can perform. Combined with uh, SIWay, HFSS, and other uh, tools for our high frequency offering, that we believe that we have a complete offering that can solve all your problems uh, when you are designing your 5G systems. Thank you. Mm -hmm.